whose life can look a lot about like this? Ups and downs? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? That's a better question, Ham. Our life can tend to look like this. High moments, middle moments, low moments, all the way off the chart moments. How has God used the ups and downs of life and work, including your mistakes, uh, to bring you closer to it? He's so good to us that when we know we've got nothing left, we've got him. Yeah, we can, I can manage this, I can manage this, and I kind of get in my own world. And work is really like that. Work is, we, we, can't, we, we pretend to separate it. And most of, most of us say, hey, well, I got this, I got that, until I don't. Now I need you. Now I need you. I don't, I'm not savior of this situation. I'm not this person's God. I'm not this person's, you're not, you're not judge and jury. You're fact presenter in that, right? And, and persuasive galvanizer, and then I'm quite sure. Uh, but, I'm, but I'm not all of, of these things. He allowed space, he allowed time, he allowed relationships. And, he, and you wouldn't have said it's all the way at the bottom at the time, but you would have said, off the cliff, what am I going to do next? I'm getting some meaning here, I'm getting purpose here, what am I going to do? And then God opens up these times, opens up doors, and, 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 and reframes what's going on. Hamp, that was your testimony. I'll give it while you eat. But the, 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 the four jobs, right? And, the, and all the way down to $16,000 and some home equity on a big deal. And yet your testimony is you knew God better by the end of it. Is that fair? I don't have a good day to remind me of that. <laughs> but it is a good day. The way you gave it. I, we're being funny. We're being funny, but the way you gave it, I mean, I have sent that to so many people. Wait a minute. F 53 and down to Nichols. I got somebody really stressed out at 42. And they're like, well, okay, wait a minute. I can go to zero. And that's what we have to do. We have to, sometimes we need to break it all the way down to nothing to then know where we are. That we've got nothing else. So it's in moments. Y'all's two are moments. Katie's and Ham's are big re total resets uh, and yet I mean, I've been working some, with somebody some, actually it's a theme over the past month but they're worried about a, a business failure so what happens if the business fails what's, your, what's, what's some of your worst fear in a business failure you have to lay people off okay and what does that do So they may, they, they, they've got a new start, but how does it end? And so, and that could be good for them, by the way, right? Who's laid somebody off and they end up doing better? I have. I have. And, and, and or, or just said you're not in the right job. But so, but then how does that affect you? At the end of it, you lay, your biggest fear is you have to lay somebody off and then what? And then what? It fails all the way, what happens? Yeah, which means the people I promise stuff to, right? And so then all of a sudden, it's not, it's not just the nickels I'd have less, it's the reputation, my reputation is different for some. That's, that's some people's biggest f uh, fear, my reputation to them. Then, then the next fear from that, it really is identity, who am I? If I don't, if I'm not this, if I'm not this successful person, if I'm not the person who's a job provider, if I'm not the person who manages things, I'm not the person who's got it all together, then who am I? If I got to start over purpose for other people, it's not identity, it's purpose. What am I going to do? That's kind of what, that's kind of what you were saying, Katie. I got a new, what am I going to do now that I'm not this? Oh, now, now I'm finding new purpose. For others, it can be the intimacy. It can be like, who am I connected to? And then for the others, it's just what is, what is, what's been my source of power, what's been my strength to say strength is different. I think those are four reasons. We're gonna, they're going to get back into that theme in a minute. This is a graph for Holy Week. We came in, we, we said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Hosanna. The, the, the Pharisees said, well, hey, you need to settle down. They said, well, Jesus said, if I, they, I hold them back. The rocks will cry out. 
It was a high spiritual moment. People were throwing down branches and cloaks and ushering him in. King of kings, Lord of lords. And they were pretty sure. Pretty high. Then, we're not really sure about Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, what happened exactly. But it was, it was more quiet. But a building up, at least for his followers, they were starting to prepare for that dinner. Prepare the room. He's going to get us all together. They're clear throughout it. They don't know exactly that it's the last one. But they, it's a really high moment. He, he gives us, he, he cleanses them. He feeds them. He assures them. He gives them in the vine and the branches this, that, the secret to life, really. The secret to success. How to stay connected. How to, how to know how to be powered in every moment. That's for Rebecca, that's what you said you went and did. I'm going to stay connected to him even to get through a 9 o'clock meeting. He gives it to us. They get a lot of it. He prays at the end of it that, oh, that they would be one. That's the, that's the thing that's worked on me the most for the last couple of years. He prays we'll be one with him. And not just us, but those you tell that we're supposed to be one with him. He prays that unbelievable high priestly prayer. It ends in 17. And then he goes out of the garden. And all chaos breaks loose. And it's down to zero. And then up to resurrection. What is your favorite story or retelling in that? Which, when you think about, everybody here I think has been a Christian for a pretty long time. When you think about the tradition of the church and Holy Week, which one sticks out to you? I'll warm you up one more way. Kyle and I heard, heard an unbelievable sermon Sunday. They're like, while the disciples were going down like this, all hiding, all running away, all defecting and denying, some, some old faithful guys kind of got to work. Joseph, who was a member of the Sanhedrin, probably a business guy, probably well, well respected, kind of moves in there. And our friend Nicodemus, who had only visited Jesus at night in the other testimony, said, you must be born again. He wasn't so sure about that. Those two guys, those two religious guys, kind of get to work, who had been working in the background, and they take a bold, while everybody says down, they take bold action. So it's just interesting how God uses people in different times. While the, or you think the most faithful are all down and out, they're down, they're sad. It's like in this national tragedy, if you, don't, if you haven't lost somebody specific or you know somebody has, you see God working. If you hear the stories of the funerals and you're pretty fired, you're like, well, that's amazing. And so you see, but these guys are seeing something and they're moving it late. And they, I don't know what they believe exactly, but they, they prepare 75 pounds of spices. To, Nicodemus says he deserves a king burial. Let's get it done. The one who seemed to be doubting and not, not wanting to be fully born again. But, so people work. That's the, right now, that's my favorite story. Who's got one else that just has shaped you over the years? Which part of these ups and downs? Tell me. Who's seen that Alistair Beck video? It's fabulous. You tell me. I want to know about the thief on the cross and how that worked out. I can't do any in Scottish accents. Let me try to stop that right away. But, but he says, I, want, I kind of want to know how that worked out. I want, you know, they're Pharisees who've been religious all of their lives. And he, Alistair says, like, so they gets up there and they get to the gates of St. Peter's and says, like, he checks his role. And like, what are you doing here? So, well, the thief on the, he says, well, the man on the middle cross said I could come. Well, then tell me about the doctrine of sanctification. You know, can you imagine Alistair Begg saying that in his way? And to, I got nothing. Tell me about justification. I got nothing. Tell me, tell me about the atonement. I got, I got, I got nothing. Well, I, hold on, let me get my supervisor. I don't, think, I, don't know if, I don't know if you're supposed to be here. He goes, how are you? The man on the middle cross said I could come. We try to complicate it. It's not, it's not complicated. If anybody wants that video, send me a text. I'll shoot it to you. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. A man on the middle cross said this. That's how simple our faith is. A man on the middle cross said, come on, I got you. What has the resurrection of Jesus Christ done for you? Yeah. And we use that different ways too, right? I've had that eternal confidence for a long time. I've not been scared. I've been willing to take risk. But I use them for myself. I knew, I knew he had the backstop, but I took the risk for myself. My work might have been known as, that's the digital guy. I want to turn the whole bank to digital. But only four or five people might know my faith. Uh, so we had to move to, you know, 
But what it, but that confidence leads to the confidence in the way I treat him. Instead of being, every time I meet with that guy, it seems like I get more hope. Who's got somebody like that in their life? And those used to get more hope. Hope to, I have this hope that makes me a hope dispenser. What else has it done for you? Eternal hope, which spins right now, right? It spins. It, it's, it's worth something now. It's not fluffy. Your soul lasts forever, and the people we're meeting with souls last forever. And it, 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 it comes up. It works. What else does it give you? I think it reorients your desires. <clears throat> what? Yeah, I'm just like, yes. No, I'm like, yes. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, it definitely does. Toward, toward what? Toward eternity. Yeah, and how's that play out? I'm going to be in Jesus. I'm going to be in heaven perfectly like Jesus. I'm going to be like him. We don't know what that means exactly. I'm not going to be God, but I'm going to be like Him without sin, without sorrow, without... So it gives me a chance to live it now because I believe it. Okay, good. Here's how faith works. This is Tim Keller on a sermon. I'm going to commend the whole thing to you. And I'm, we're going to cover some of it now. We're going to relate it to work. But he says faith works like this. Faith in anything works like this. And we're about to cover this in detail. But evidence only leads to reason or rational probability. The resurrection is about the most proved long-time historical event that ever existed. We've got more proof on that than we have Brutus stabbing Caesar in the back. We've got witnesses. We've got testimonies. We've got markers. We've got historical documents. We've, it's really proven. But evidence, in today's days we have video, right? And even video can be altered. But, but if, uh, historically, there's probably nothing more proven. And, and, and I was going to start that lesson, but it, it's true. And if you need more proof, I can send you to the resources. Uh, I commend the, those of you who hadn't seen it, uh, The Case for Christ and The Case for Easter by Lee Strobel, a reporter who's an atheist who just dug in to find it. But evidence, Keller says, evidence only leads to reasonable, rational probability. Meaning that hiring somebody or the way to handle that interview or the way to handle that discussion with that employee, a difficult one, I think this is the right way. I have faith to do this. But if I only know that it's the right way by doing it. I only know, I've got a reasonable probability that last time I treated somebody in a counseling situation this way, last time I handled a case this way, last time I've evaluated a new job, I did it this way. It's a reasonable probability. It seems good, but especially in a job. Who's, who's taking a job thought it was one way, it was totally different? Every promotion, it was that way over 30 years, right? So it'd be this way, it ended up being a little different. Now, some, most of us, we stayed because of the difference, but every, every job is different than we, than we plan it, <laughs> right? So, it's, so it only takes us so far. That's what we told you in your interview, Rebecca, right? That it, we promise you what we're telling you, it won't, be, it won't be that way. It'll be something a little different, sort of. We didn't know. Well, it didn't, the memo did, didn't flow down. But the evidence only leads so far that what you can figure out, only to, this is probably true, I'm going to trust it. The whole thing about, I've got to finally sit in the chair. But trust leads us to vulnerability. So it's, I at least got to try the chair. I have to try to hire this person. They're, they're as good as they, if they're as good as they seem, the resume seems good, the, the references check out, but I've got to try. And it's not till we've really hired them, employees you've hired, a little bit. The best resumes, the best interviews have been total bombs, right? Some. And then some of the shaky ones you took a chance on worked out. It's worked out for all of us. But only trying something leads to vulnerability. I'm, I'm sorry, only leads to certainty. So you have to become vulnerable. You have to take a chance. You have to, to make the hire. You have to hedge business that it was all he had to take the best risk the best probability then to be vulnerable with the nickels to decide there was upside or downside but faith that's why faith is a gift because the power to then be vulnerable in front of Jesus comes from God he given it he's given it he attracts us to himself but it really we don't really prove out our faith is a walking gift in Jesus it's not a squishy faith but it, it's in a person who's done it all and completed it all, and the historical facts are true, but really we've got to rely on it. 
We get, and when we take it past Sunday to Tuesday meeting or the Wednesday 9 o'clock meeting, it, it, it plays out. So think about that, and then let's read this. Uh, and then Keller also says this, the higher and greater the object of faith, the more radical the vulnerability must be to achieve the object. The higher and greater the, uh, the, the object of faith, the more radical, sorry for the typo, that the vulnerability must be. Oh, this is my whole life I'm talking about. I'm trusting Him for everything. So I'll be vulnerable with everything. That's, that's one reason the ups and downs are there. They were high moments. You got us. We put our trust in you, but we weren't expecting the downfall. We weren't expecting the full drop-off of it. So, Kyle, let's start and let's read this in the, the, the morning after. So we've got the body's been buried and they're running to check on it. It's early. They're running. They're investigating. But when Jesus finally sits them all down at once, after all that he told them, all that he told them to remain in him, uh, to ask whatever they wish, it'd be done for. To they, he's doing this to make them one. And they scatter and they defect and they, um, they, uh, hold on, and they run away. How does, he, how does he meet with them? What's his first word to him here? Peace be with you. Not, what happened to you that night? Why'd you leave? It's a really scolding opportunity. <laughs> he told them per perfection. He told them he'd prepared a place for them. He told them it was all going to work out. They scattered and he says, peace be with you. He run, he, they're nervous. They're scared. They're believing everything he said. They got it all bolted up. They're on lockdown. They're at least together. It's a really good start. A really good start. Get with, get with your friends. Huddle up. Encourage each other by way. He said this. You know they've got to be talking it over. You know it's really relevant. Peace be with you. Um, he comes in. He lets him see his hands and feet. He's totally intimate. Check it all out. Shows him everything. And as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. He, uh, after peace. So he, also, he recommissions them. Right away, he takes them, takes them from their lowest moment to let them know he's real, he's back, and then he gives them a new job right away. Totally recommissions them. And he totally gives them the power to do it. So he lets them know, gives them purpose, lets them know who they are, and then he gives them the Holy Spirit to do it by. These are real gifts that play out at work. And Keller it makes them clear in, in his sermon that I'll refer to you if you want it. Intimacy, purpose, identity, and power. Again, they're all under faith, but those are the things he gives us. Intimacy, purpose, identity, and power. Um, and let's, let's just look at them and see how they play out at work. If you've met the risen Christ, you know what it is to grab him and take hold of him. How's that? If you've met the risen Christ... You know what it is to grab him and talk. Lord, I need you in this moment. I need you. We didn't expect this to go down this way. Help me. Grab him. He's, he's, he, there's some verses in between. And Mary's saying, I want, to, I want to grab you now. But it's not something about not touching him, really. It really is about you're about to have full access. Is what Keller said. You're about to have, you have full, Rebecca took that full access this morning. So part of it is, is you know he's with you in the meeting. You know you have to go to a certain place at a certain time to touch a certain thing. You know there are no tricks. It's just being with him. I can be with him in these three minutes in this car. And, and prepare me for this thing that I really don't want to do. So it's first intimacy that he gives us. Second, it's purpose. If you've met the risen Christ, says Keller, you find there's a sentness about you. He never heals us without sending us uh, to heal others. Ever. We get stuck just on ourselves. But he's saying, peace be with you. You know they're freaking out. You know they're, they're scared. And he gets straight from peace be with you to I'm sending you. And then how you're going to forgive others. He gets, the, he gets it off of them right away. 
We get it on us the whole time. But he's been this way the whole time. He's this way with Abraham. Abraham, here's the deal. You're going to go to a land I hadn't told you about. And I'm going to, you're going to have a son. And all the nations are going to be blessed. And anybody who curses you will be cursed. Anybody who blesses you will be blessed. You're the most blessed person in the history of the world right now. And I'm going to use you to bless others. Right away. It's always, I'm going to use, you're blessed to be a blessing. So why do I have all this stuff? Is this salvation just mine? This hope that I have? Okay, I've got this, I've got this gift of hope. It's awesome. How am I dis di dispensing it? I got this assurance of where I'm going to be. How am I dispensing that? I got this know that I can meet with Jesus. How am I dispensing that? How do you use, what's the right way to use your sentness at work? Everybody you're meeting with is a soul. Everybody you're meeting with has got a burden. Everybody you're meeting with is, is carrying around that baggage. And a way to, to free them from it. Now, sometimes love is helping them pay for their mistake. Sometimes it is. Jesus is pretty clear about that a few times. Sometimes it's knocking it out completely. Don't worry about that. That's on the house. And you're discerning and, and looking in their heart and loving them. You know the difference. So a sentence, the moment, Keller said, there's just no navel-gazing Christians. No... If I, if, what about me in this scenario? What about me? What about me? What about me? And then what about... I've got a chance to restart. I've got a chance. I need a new start. It's got somebody we're working with, moved here, worked for a big company, and said, I want to... But I've moved to Memphis because eventually I want to work in Memphis and eventually I want to get involved in the city. It's just I want to be part of it. And God caused a 20,000 person layoff right after he moved here and said, get involved right away. So he does his sentence. He wants to redeploy us. He wants to take this thing that's the end of us and redeploy. It works great, Ham. You got to the end of that with that home equity. And now you've been blessing my life for eight years in this stuff or in, in doing this and in, in providing hope in, in, in good financial situations and bad. Everybody in your office is looking for hope, Kyle and Ham, aren't they? In financial services. They're burdened. You, those that are burdened with their nickels. And those that are stressed about the lack of nickels, either way, there's a chance to be super missional right there. Either way, and feel free just to jump in and share. The more y'all talk, the better this will be. Um, but they know the sentence. And that's how our purpose in life is when we just move past ourselves. It's, it's well, wait a minute. I've got that intimacy with him. He's with me every minute. So I can run into danger, as we saw in Nashville. On purpose, you're starting to protect others. I can go do that. This moment is not about me because I'm covered. I know where I'm going. That hope, that salvation, I can move into it. I can see I'm sent. And, and, and it, yes, all over the, for the missions of Memphis, the nonprofits, awesome. And yet every single person God's put me with is a chance uh, to do that all day long, to give them that hope of the resurrection. Identity. We want to know who we are all the time. When you find yourself by finding the risen Christ, you must lose yourself to find yourself. It's, it's by knowing Jesus that you know who you are. I've got to know Him first, His purposes, His plans. And when I know, when I know he, who He is and how He did things, I, start, I have the right view of self. Which, first of all, is what? How does Jesus see you? Let's throw out some promises here. We need some. We need to liven up this room. How does he see you? Perfectly. Perfectly. Redeemed. Clean. When did he choose you? From before the beginning of time. That's why I need to know God before I can know self. If I was, if I was, if I did something to earn this somehow, some way, you know, that Peyton, he's going to do such a good job for that marine company that I'm, I think I'm going to choose him. No. I love him because I love him because I love him and I put everything, every struggle, every event, every, everything in his life to bring him to me. The ups and downs of the bars are all, well, this is a really good day. What's it for? To glorify the Lord. This is a really bad day. What's the situation? What's it for? To glorify the Lord. He's mine. She's mine. Everything's in it. So this is to bring us to him somehow. Everything. 
He sees you. He sees you. He knows you. He loves you. He's saying, see, see, see yourself how I see you. Okay, that was a mistake. That's what was last week, high standard. That, yeah, you missed the standard. It's clear. It's perfect. You, you can do better. I want you to do better. But, but the sin brings more grace. Paul said, sin brings so much more grace to me. Should I keep sinning? And he says, no, no. Keep the standard. You'll be, be better off. So yeah, it's Peter's like, yeah, yeah, you, Lord, you watch those other guys. You're not going to watch me. Jesus says what? He says, he says, you can have no part in me if I don't cleanse you. He goes, well, then wash everything. Wash the whole body. Hit paste. And I'll settle down on that. You just need me to wash your feet. So he, he's up. He's that up and down in that two minutes. And then he, and he's up and down. He cuts off the top of this bar. He cuts off the ear. Nobody's taking Jesus. Cut that guy's ears off. And later, the, uh, the brother of the guy is, is, is with him in another uh, passage, right? Um, the guy cut the ear off. I have fulfilled that guy's be in heaven or they wouldn't be proclaiming that name. I don't, I don't know that for sure. That's an extra bonus. Maybe not be. Take it where you need to take it. But those ups and downs, he does it. Let's, let's read this because it's all jumbled up now anyway. Let's read this uh, where we left off. Rebecca. Because this is what you did this morning. And this is, this is how to stay. He says, you can know. You can know where you are all the time. I've given you this access. Read it, Rebecca. Okay. We can get confused on these verses that there's some kind of performance. But he's saying, as the Father loves me, I, I love you. You're loved perfectly, completely, all the time. You're never going to be loved more than you are right now. You're going to understand that love all the better. But to, under the, un, to understand the lo love, walk in His commands. It's the, it's the method by which you understand His love is to stay in His commands. All the analogies about airplanes flying, at the right, fly, flying on the right radar, flying on, they keep it going in the right way. But this is, you can ask whatever you will. It keeps going. Peyton, read it. I didn't tell you this to earn it. I didn't tell you just, you've all made mistakes. That's what he's saying. He, he reaches them in the room. And I'm telling you this so you have complete joy. I'm telling you this so you know how to live. I'm telling you to so love each other as I've loved you. And he's headed, in this case, he's headed there. I'm about to lay down my life for my friends. And, and you're my friends. So I've got you. You're my friends. Now go do the same. The moment you're in threatened that you think somebody, it's, it's, it, that sentence is to lay it down. Well, I got to protect this. This person's kind of coming after me. What's, what's, what is the method? If God had to remain in His words to ask whatever I wish and it would be done for you, means I'm going to lean in and see what is His method for doing this. It's not a genie in the bottle. Who's prayed a prayer they didn't get? Who's known they're praying in the will of God and seeing it happen? Who's had a powerful prayer? Lord, if this is your will, please do it. Seeing it happen and, and, and known that that prayer was powerful. It's to, we still work. Our, our actions and the sovereignty of God do work together. We, the prophet has no honor in his hometown. He got to his hometown. He could do very few miracles. So our prayers and actions and praying do interact with it. So we've got to stay with them, command all the way through that. And in that identity... We'll know it. Knowing we're His, knowing where He's taken us, we'll know what to do. We have to lose ourself. That's the second part of that. I have to push over my needs. Jesus never, you can't really find a verse where you say, well, pass the ketchup. So they didn't have a place to lay His head. So He's saying, I got you. You're so covered. You're so mine. You don't have to find yourself. You find yourself in me. And then he gives us the power to do it. The complete power to do it. He says, I've given you the Holy Spirit to go out. He gives us the, is the channel. If we know him, we know, we have the, we know he, he's going with us. He's in us. His Holy Spirit's in us. And we're going out in this workday. How would Jesus try this case? That's the standard. He hadn't, he hadn't met it yet. And so he's giving you complete first. He's got you, but he's saying, now move into, now move into the way it's done. In this new job, how do, I, how, do I, how do I restart? He's a God of fresh starts. How do I restart to send out, to be sent, to know that I'm an instrument of his peace right here and right now 
in this. So it looks like this. At our conversion, here's a campus outreach. Have I seen this graph before? They've used it for years. It's fabulous. Whatever your life conversion was, there's a point that you're converted, and then there's a growing awareness of God's holiness. Peter has his greatest awareness of God's holiness after he's denied him three times, after he's done all the wrong things, and after he gets restored, and he does that three, threefold restore, after he jumps in with his clothes on, swims across, he's so excited to meet him, he's restored, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. So Peter is never more convinced of his sin in his life. He's been following him for th three years. He's never more convinced of God's holiness, but he moves a step forward to it. And so, in all that way, he gives me one more struggle. He gives me one more good day. He gives me one more difficult thing to go through. And I've got to rely on him and rely on him. Cost me something, but which makes me see his holiness that much more. This is painful. I don't like it. Oh. Sandy said here, it counted high privilege to serve in the name of Jesus in this thing. Um, growing awareness of my sinfulness. All that just makes the cross bigger in our life. And to all this, so Tim Keller's pretty good at teaching all this stuff. But, it, but recently, in this cancer, and, and, and right now he's looking sicker and sicker. That's one reason I want to keep using this stuff, because he's just, he's, he's helped inform the church in a way more than anybody in the last few decades. But he says, and he's a big proponent against the health and wealth gospel, he would say, but after he got this cancer, he said on his podcast I was listening to, he said, I never realized what a health and wealth Christian I was until we had the cancer. And he and Kathy are saying, not until, so I, you know, I'm somewhere at the O. You know, Keller's saying he's somewhere in here. But, you know, the more, I don't know where I am, I'm teasing. But I, I know that the more I rely on, the more I move into his commands, the more I see his holiness, I actually see more of my depravity. Keller's saying at the highest spiritual moment in his life, he sees his own depravity. He said, Lord, I'm doing some pretty good stuff here. Why are we going to have cancer? Kathy's saying, why? Why? Aren't I being used by you, God? Yes. So now I'm going to use you this way. Now he's already lived twice as long as he's supposed to have lived. But I'm going to use you. I'm going to keep using you. And so he said, what he's saying, he learned a new depth of his sinfulness. And he learned a new part of his holiness in the next trial that God put before him. In his work. That's where he brings back. So when Paul says, in my weakness, I'm made strong, he brings back his intimacy. I know I'm his. I know he's got me. I know he's with me. I know he allows me in all these things, these mysteries of God that you taught about. Hey, then I know my purpose is, as it is to bless others, I know I'm covered, so I'm moved because I'm covered, I'm blessing others. I know my identity, I'm His, I can't be removed, and then I know I have the power of Him to do it. That's why Paul can talk so bold. He knows he, I, I, I'd, rather be with, I'd rather be with Christ. I know it. To live is Christ, to die is gain. But I know He's got more work for me to do. I'm confident because he's, He keeps giving me the power to do it, so He must want me to keep doing it. So today, Holy Week, lean into it. I, I commend heavily to read, all, read, from, read from John 13 all the way to the end of 20. Save 20 till Easter morning. But read over it all, all the assurance, all the power, all the blessings, all the method, all the way he's saying remain in me and you can do anything by his power. We can do anything. And we're going to be made perfect. Father, you're perfect and holy and gazing at your holiness, uh, Lord, we feel weak. Uh, we feel uh, ashamed. We feel uh, not worthy um, in our mistakes, uh, on, on trial, uh, in public spectacle. We, we, we feel like um, it's up to us. And you're saying, you've got us. You care for us. We're yours. You've had us since the beginning. You're taking us exactly where you want us to go. Nothing is going to happen to us that you don't want to happen. And so we have the power to push ourselves aside and to move into blessing others because you gave it to us. Uh, and real love is laying down our life for our friends, and that's what you did, and you call us friends. Thank you for that, Jesus. 
Help us to believe it every minute. In your name, amen.